This is the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. Michael Rossi rented the beach house. He wasn't concerned about its history. He simply liked the solitude, the atmosphere. But there are others drawn to the same house, though for different reasons. Come in. Thank you. Hello, Paul. How are you? Am I interrupting something? No, no, not at all. I have to leave anyway. You've been more than hospitable, Dr. Rossi. Good night. Good night. Well, uh, can I get you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Did uh, Paul have any special reason for coming here tonight? No, no. He just uh, saw my light, decided to drop in. Strange young man. And he's trouble. Did he confide in you? I'm surprised you asked me that. You know, if he did, I couldn't tell you. Well, he's not your patient. I'm not talking as a doctor. All right, Rossi, I didn't come here for a doctor. I came here to see you. I'm trying to prove I didn't commit a murder here. More than that, I've got to prove it. Otherwise, well, prison or not, I'll never be free. And I think I've got a chance. Rossi, this is my house. You want me to move out of it? I've got to move in. All this time, you must have known I was coming home. I tried the house. They said you came back here. How's George? He's much better. The shock treatments are helping. I'm very glad to hear that. George knows that Greenvale is expensive. He's beginning to ask where the money's coming from. There's no need for him to know. It's part of Betty's settlement for the annulment. That is her settlement. That's all she asks, that you pay for George's treatment. What are you asking of her, Les? I don't understand. I'm talking about that private detective's report. Rod shouldn't have told her. I only showed him the report so he'd understand. So he'd stay away from her. That is what you wanted, isn't it? But of course it is. They made a mistake. They agreed to erase it. It's better for all concerned. Were you concerned about Betty when you showed Rod that report? I wouldn't have shown it to anyone but Rod. But the fact that you kept it. Now, wait a minute, Julie. I have the report, yes, but I didn't dictate its contents. I can't be blamed for Betty's actions in New York. Betty was a frightened girl running away from a situation here in Peyton Place that she couldn't understand. A situation we helped create, Les. We've got to accept the responsibility for that. How? By letting them become involved again? By letting them alone. Well, I suppose you're right, but the damage is done now. I came here to ask just one thing, Les. No more damage. Not to my daughter. These are the last remaining copies of the report. Now you can forget him. Thank you. It's over with, Julie. Now let me see you smile.
Rodney. Uh, Mrs. Harrington's here already. Uh, excuse me. I guess I'm a little early. No, I... I'm, I'm, I was late. Well, it's been a long, cold day, hasn't it? Is that meant to be very profound? No. I just felt the situation needed a little idle conversation, that's all. I wouldn't know. I've never been in this kind of situation before. Well, my apologies. Only I don't really think we should talk about sincerity, do you? I don't see any reason to talk at all. No, you didn't see any reason to talk when you got back from New York, either. Suppose I'd told everything, Rodney. Then you and your father wouldn't have any nice detective stories to read. Is that supposed to be funny? Not at all. I'm here to sign a paper, not to make you laugh. That guy in New York. Did you make him laugh? Well, while you're both waiting, would you like to read this? No, I know what it says. Where do I sign, please? On the second page. I'll get you a pen. The annulment hearing is scheduled in Judge Whitley's chambers. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Dodd. Dodd? Yes. Hi, Rod, Betty. Sit down. Well, everything seems to be in order from a preliminary point of view. Have you both thought this over carefully? Are you sure you want to go through with this? Yes, we are, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's, it's done every day, isn't it, Mr. Dow? Yes, I'm afraid so. Have you thought about grounds? Not the same as grounds for divorce, you know. Yes, sir, we know. Sir, there was fraud on my part. Then you want Rod to sue for Norman. He thought I was going to have the baby. He's to take the action. It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, Mr. Dow, there are other grounds. Yes. I mean, Betty could sue for the annulment. If one of the parties was to refuse the obligation to marital relationship, Sir, I did. It's true. So may I, may I please leave? Yes, of course. You'll be notified. Betty. No matter what the court says, your marriage will never be null and void. You know that, don't you? Yes. I know that. Whoa. Nuts, creams, fudges, caramels, oh boy. Oh, all these things get stuck in your teeth, and then more medical bills. <laughs> oh, decisions, decisions. <laughs> Which one shall I start with? Oh, you have to choose for yourself, George. <laughs> this isn't a box of chocolates. This is occupational therapy. Mmm. <laughs> mmm-hmm. Mm. Thank Betty for me, will you? I wish she was here so I could thank her for myself. Well, she wanted to come, but she's looking for a job, and she had an appointment. A job? She just wants to keep busy. Oh, you mean for therapy? <laughs> you could call it that. Mm. She doesn't need a job, does she? I mean, the Harringtons are taking care of her, aren't they? No, George. Betty didn't want any money for herself. No. Well, <laughs> that's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't want to 
to become one of those career girls. You know, when I get back, I'm going to try and see that she gets everything she deserves. I got plans. Uh, not big plans, you know, like before. I mean, I realize I've got to uh, take it easy and start slowly. And you've got to walk before you run. And the doctors here are going to see that it's just that way. They're going to send me home for a little trial visit. A visit, George? Yeah, sort of a little vacation from here, you know? Well, have they uh, talked to you about coming home? Well, no, but they had described to me how it'll work. Nothing definite? No, nothing really definite, but I know they're thinking about it. It, uh, it'd be all right with you, wouldn't it, Julie, if I came home for a visit? Well, of course, George. I mean, as, as long as the doctors feel that you're ready for it. Yeah, well, they want to see how I do on the outside, and I want to do it right. You know, they say half the battle of getting well is wanting to, and I want to. I know that, George. I, uh, I worry about the expense, though. Oh, George. And you know they won't even let me see my bill in here? I said to the doctor, look, forget the shock treatments. Just show me how much I owe you here. Look, will you please stop worrying about the money? Mm -hmm. I worry about us, too, sometimes, Julie. Sometimes I think you wouldn't want me to come home. You'd be better off without me. You can't think that way, George. It, it just isn't true. It isn't really? No, we need you. Betty and I both need you. Oh, I wish you really meant that. Do you, honey? Do you really mean it? Yes, yes, George. All right. All right, I'll get well soon. You'll see. I'll be home real soon. Good afternoon. Oh, hello, Doctor. George, would you excuse us now, please? You, uh... It's all right. Bye now, and we do miss you. Have some candy. My uh, husband is much better today, isn't he, Doctor? Yes, he's making good progress. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. At this stage in your husband's therapy, I believe he'd be benefited by a trial visit to his home. Oh, I see. I wanted to see what you would think of such a visit, Mrs. Anderson. Well, I, uh, I want whatever's best for George, of course. Well, you see, the hospital environment is an unnatural one at best. Here, your husband is protected from all the outside pressures of life, the pressures that led to his breakdown. It's a little bit like living in a vacuum. Yes, I guess so. In the early stages of therapy, this is necessary. But as the patient begins to improve, it's important to restore the normal environment. By degrees, of course. When do you think he will be ready for this trial visit? In a week or two, perhaps, if he continues to make progress. You don't think that's too soon? Not for your husband, Mrs. Anderson. You mean, is it too soon for me? Well, your attitude when he comes home will be extremely important. Not just what you say and do, but your inner attitude. Now, he'll need patience, understanding, most of all, love. Are you able to give him that kind of help, Mrs. Anderson? I'm not sure, Doctor. 